I'm not sure if there are proper words to describe how bad of a spot Mizzou football is currently in. As many of you guys know, I am a diehard Mizzou fan, and I would definitely say they are my favorite college football team. I will also not be naive and say they are probably the worst team in the SEC. There is a current debate going on with them in Vanderbilt, but if these two schools played head-to-head -head next weekend, I would put my money on the Commodores. Mizzou is in a really bad spot. They've had an atrocious season so far, and the trajectory of the program continues to go down while other programs in the East are going up. They had a disastrous weekend against Auburn, and this just sums up what has gone wrong with the Mizzou program over the last few years. In today's video, we're going to talk about Mizzou football, why things have gotten so bad, how bad the season has gone, and what I think is going to happen next for the program. But before we get into it, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so quickly be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you want to support the channel, let me know what topic I should cover next, and turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's get started and talk about Mizzou football. So my first memory as a human being on this earth is actually watching a Mizzou game, so I have been watching this team for a long, long time. They've had their highs and their lows. In both 2007 and 2013, they were one game away from the national title. They had some really good teams and some really good players. Guys like Chase Daniel, Jeremy Macklin, Doriel Green Beckham, Blaine Gabbert, Shane Ray, and Alden Smith were all incredible. And I just remember the vibe and the atmosphere around the team was so much different. Fans actually went to the games, they competed against good teams, and they didn't have extremely boring offenses and defenses. They've gotten to the point where they care more about their uniform combinations than they actually care about on-field play. Pretty much no one goes to the games anymore, and every time a big opponent comes to town, they get blown up or they mess up in some sort of silly way. This is not how it always was though, as under Gary Pinkle, the team was always well coached, they competed in almost every game, and because of that, they saw a lot of success, especially at the quarterback spot. Brad Smith was a generational type quarterback for Mizzou, and that led into the Chase Daniel era, where as I said earlier, they almost got to a national championship with him. After that, you had Blaine Gabbert, who was obviously a five-star recruit and a top 10 pick. Then you had James Franklin, who was great. Matty Mock, who was solid. And then you had Drew Locke. Unfortunately, ever since then, they have been in a downward spiral at the quarterback spot. In 2019, they brought in Kelly Bryant, and he was a disappointment. Taylor Powell started, and he wasn't any good. Sean Robinson was a big-time transfer, but he was terrible. Connor Bazelak had some bright spots, but he battled injury, and the fan base turned on him quickly, so he transferred. Now that leads into this year's first problem, and that is the quarterback. There is just no one here. Currently, Brady Cook is the starter, but he might be the worst starting quarterback Mizzou has had since probably 2004. He is not very accurate, has yet to make a lot of good plays, and just does not look comfortable back there. In my opinion, he is nothing but a game manager and a backup quarterback at best, but not all the blame can be put on him. Mizzou's offensive line is absolutely atrocious, so any quarterback back there is going to struggle and is going to have a hard time. Behind him, you have seventh-year quarterback Jack Abraham, who spent time at Southern Miss and Mississippi State before he transferred to Mizzou. He has not been any better, as in two of his three passes, he threw interceptions, and he is not good at all. Behind him, you have Tyler Macon, who was a blue-chip quarterback out of East St. Louis, but apparently he's with the scout team right now, so it looks like he's not going to be starting anytime soon. The only beacon of hope for Mizzou fans right now is true freshman Sam Horn. This guy played with Travis Hunter in high school in Georgia and was for a while a top 100 recruit. He was definitely a consensus top 15 high school quarterback in the class of 2022, but for a while he was trying to decide between football and baseball. I think this stunted his growth a little bit as he came in midsummer and is definitely a little bit behind right now. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Horn is going to play over the next two games as he is apparently just not ready. And since Mizzou plays Georgia and Florida coming up, it would not be wise to get this guy killed. So the first problem is the quarterback, and honestly, I don't see a lot of hope. At best, Sam Horn comes in and wins a game or two and shows promise for the future, and at this point, I don't know if it can get any worse. The second problem, as I've already stated, is the offensive line. Besides Javon Foster, who is a likely NFL draft pick, the other four guys in the offensive line have been terrible. This is one thing that has plagued Mizzou football over the last few years, and it is not getting any better this year. The quarterback has no time to throw the ball. They're constantly getting bullied around by every team that plays them, and in turn, this leads to them not being able to run the ball and being extremely one-dimensional, and when you have a bad quarterback to begin with, this just makes things 100 times worse. Until the offensive line is fixed, Mizzou football is not getting anywhere. The third problem is coaching. 
While I will say I am still in support of Eli Drinkwitz because of how well he has recruited, his play calling is absolutely terrible. Pretty much every single play is some sort of screen or slant, and it's just extremely boring and very predictable. There's also a lot of times where it seems he is settling, and when you have a bad quarterback and a bad offensive line, you have to get creative and you have to change things up. It seems that Drinkwitz is completely settling in that department, and this Mizzou offense is extremely boring. But Scott, you may be asking, there are no weapons. That's false. Dominic Lovett and Luther Burden are two of the best athletes Mizzou has had at wide receiver in years, and when they've been given a chance to have the ball, they have succeeded. I mean, Luther was an All-American and a top five recruit coming out of high school, and on his very first punt return, he scored a touchdown. He's been dazzling defenders for years, and he was not targeted once this past weekend against Auburn. Dominic Lovett has been the lone bright spot this season, as he looks like he could be a future NFL draft pick, and when the ball is even somewhat in his radius, he seems to make a play or make a catch. You'd think you'd find a way to get these two the ball more, but again, I'm not coaching, and they probably know something I don't. The fourth problem that I think is the biggest problem surrounding Mizzou football is the culture. When they made the move to the SEC, they were going to be getting more money and more attention, but maybe this was to the program's downfall. In two of their first three years, they actually won the SEC East, but ever since then, things have gotten boring. They moved on. After Gary Pinkle retired, Barry Odom came in, and he was a very bland personality, could not recruit well, and had pretty boring schemes. He also missed on a couple of coordinators, most notably Derek Dooley, and this basically led the team to be very boring. Drew Locke would put up big numbers against teams like Delaware State and Vanderbilt, but when it came time for them to play a decent team like Georgia, Florida, or Tennessee, he would crumble under the pressure. This led to most of the games being extremely boring, and since they moved to the SEC, they were playing schools they had no historical ties to. In the past, you might show up because of a rivalry with a school like Iowa State, Kansas State, or Kansas, but now there's really no reason to show up. Add in the fact that the team was pretty boring and they always disappointed, this has led to extreme fan apathy to the point where they're trying crazy ways to get students to come to the game. I legitimately cannot remember the last time Mizzou beat a decent team at home, as it may go back to 2014 against Arkansas. They've had many chances to play ranked teams at home, but they've always disappointed, they've always gotten blown out, or found a heartbreaking way to lose. For example, in 2018, they had a top 15 Kentucky team come to town, and that game was pretty much sold out. Mizzou had the lead for the entire game, but in the last three minutes, they allowed a punt return touchdown, and then allowed Kentucky to go down the field and score with no time left. Yes, there was a controversial pass interference call, but Mizzou went without a first down the entire second half. They found another way to lose a heartbreaking game, and fans just don't care anymore. It seems almost every non-conference game they play is against an FCS or a terrible team, so what's the point in going to that? The culture around Mizzou football absolutely has to change. Yes, currently Drinkwitz is recruiting extremely well, but at some point you have to put results on the field and start winning games or those recruits are going to transfer or stop committing. We've already seen that as some of the big names in the state have left for other schools, and I would not be surprised to see a couple of these big time players transfer if the team continues to be a dumpster fire and they continue to not get the ball. Overall, the Tigers have had bad quarterback play, they've had some bad coaching hires, the offensive line has been abysmal, player development has gone down, and fan attendance is at an all-time low. All this together creates a terrible culture, and this season it has been on full display. They struggled with Louisiana Tech in Week 1, and also got pushed around by Abilene Christian in Week 3. In Week 2 against Kansas State, they had one of the worst games in Mizzou history, as they threw 4 interceptions in I believe 5 or 6 possessions, and got blown out in humiliating fashion against Kansas State. This is a team that on paper they should be about equal with, and in Year 3 under Drinkwitz, it showed that no improvement had been made. Week 4 be an opportunity against Auburn, but again, the team was a colossal failure, and they had an all-time catastrophic finish. After not moving the ball the whole day, they got lucky with a completion inside the five-yard line and would have a chance to win the game with a last-second field goal. The score was tied 14-14, and at the five-yard line, Drink was decided he was going to take a knee a couple times instead of trying to score. I mean, he did have an All-American kicker, and it was like a 25-yard field goal, so I guess I can't totally blame him for playing it safe. How did it go? Well, he ended up kicking it to the right and missed from extra point range. This would lead the game to overtime, where they would drop an interception, and then they would go off sides and allow Auburn to re-kick a field goal they had previously missed. The Tigers went up 17-14, but just a couple of plays later, Mizzou found themselves running to the end zone, and running back Nathaniel Pete was going to score. Instead of just going out of bounds or holding onto the ball, he decided to dive for the pylon, where the ball went out of his hand at the one yard line, and went through the end zone, resulting in a touchback. This led Auburn to win the game 17-14, to 
and at two different times, they had probably a 99.9% .9 chance to win, but still managed to lose. Add in the fact that there was a ton of coaching problems, the offensive line got pushed around again, and they were playing probably the worst Auburn team in a decade. This has shown just how bad of a spot Mizzou football is currently in, and honestly, I see no end in sight for the remainder of the season. They're going to get pushed around horribly next week against Georgia, and there's no reason why I think they'd beat Florida. Games against Kentucky, Tennessee, and Arkansas are surely going to be losses, and while South Carolina and Vanderbilt aren't great, I honestly don't see Mizzou winning either of those games either. Luckily, they have their tune-up game against New Mexico State later on in the season, and the team's going to end up going 3-9. They'll have three wins against terrible teams, and I think they'll go winless in conference play, and this could lead to a lot of changes. The one bright spot has been the defense, as in my eyes they have not been too bad, but pretty much everything else needs an overhaul. The team's not disciplined, the line is terrible, they don't have a quarterback, and the culture at Mizzou is broken. With Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC, it's only going to make things tougher for Mizzou, and if they don't get it together soon, they're going to be at the bottom of the conference for years to come, and a team that I grew up watching and loved to watch is crumbling before my eyes. To show a little optimism, maybe Sam Horn comes in and does well, maybe the offensive line gets it together, and they start getting the ball to their playmakers and get to a bowl game. That's the best case scenario, but at this point, I don't think it's likely. I also think Drinkwitz will get a fourth year because of how well he is recruiting. He signed two of the best classes in Mizzou history over the last two seasons, and maybe once his guys get on the field, things are going to change. But what the heck do I know? If you're a Mizzou fan, give me your thoughts down below. Why is the program such a mess? What's your projected record for the remainder of the season? And how can they fix it? If you're a fan of another school, especially an SEC school, give me your thoughts on why Mizzou is in a bad spot, and also let me know another topic, player, coach, or situation I could cover in my next video. Also, before you go, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.